In today's video, I show off these two ships from Printable Scenery. Today's video is sponsored by Into the AM. They produce these awesome graphical tees. I really like the design from this shirt, as well as all of their other items are super soft and comfortable. So make sure you check them out. They have an awesome deal where you can get three graphical tees for $60. And if you use the link below, you can get an additional 10% off. So thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. Also, I want to share with you what the GGGG is for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of February of 2022, we have four $25 credits to my new merch store and $100 going towards the Deep Rock Galactic Kickstarter. If you want to get in on that, go ahead and use my link below to go to my Patreon page. I printed out a lot of stuff from Printable Scenery, primarily scenery for my war games on the tabletop. And in one of their previous Kickstarters a while ago, I did receive all of these ships. And at that time, I didn't really have any reason to print out any ships. But these look so cool that I went ahead and printed out these two models. This is the Frigate MK2. And this is the black ship. And this is one of the rare cases where I actually print something out without a game in mind. And I like these ships so much that I went ahead and tried to find a rule set. And props to one of my Patreon supporters, Greg Padilla. He really helped me out a lot with um, making these prints as well as how to do the rigging and the sails as well. He's an active member on our Discord channel as well as the Blood and Plunder Facebook page. And use the links below to also get any of these files as well as check out Blood and Plunder. I had a ton of fun printing out these models and I do have a painting tutorial at the end of the video if you want to use the timestamps below to skip ahead to that. But these are very fast to paint up. Up. It isn't very difficult at all. And one of the things that I really appreciate about this STL file is that you're not printing out the masts. Instead, they have designed it so that you can use wooden dowels, both using the metric system for the rest of the world and the English system as well here in the United States. So they have modified their files to adapt to either one. The reason why I prefer not to print out these masks is because anything that is really long and thin like this can snap really easily, especially if you're printing up like this. But even when it's printed flat across, it doesn't come out very well. So I think it's actually a really good thing that you're not printing out the mass at all, but that you're just using wooden dowels to put it together. And I found that it wasn't very difficult at all. You're printing out these little fittings that you can put the dowels together with. And so that makes it really easy and you're not wasting a lot of time printing out these long pieces as well. Also, you will need string to do the rigging. And again, I have links for how I got this flexible um, elastic string, which worked really well. So make sure you do check out the Blood and Plunder Facebook page because there's a lot of resources if you want to know how to uh, make these up. Now, I did sign up for Blood and Plunder Tournament at Adepticon that is coming up at the end of March, uh, mostly because I want to learn how to play. And one of the bad things about Adepticon is there is no just sort of sessions to learn the game. Uh, there's only tournaments. So I went ahead and signed up for a tournament because I do want to learn how to play. Now in Blood and Plunder, it is more of a historical game, but I did with this black ship create an uh, army of undead. And I don't have actually any pirate miniatures or any sailor miniatures. I did pre-order the new Blood and Plunder box set that's supposed to come out in March. Not sure if that's going to come out in time for Adepticon, but plan on being able to use that rule set to be able to play this game. And even though it's a historical, I always want to have some kind of fantasy involved with it. And so that's why I created this undead ship. And I have these uh, undead uh, skeletons from my Rune Wars set. And I'm going to use those as the miniatures. And then over here, I do have just the miniatures as well as this Kraken set from Conan. I do plan on replacing all of these soldiers with a legit faction from Blood and Plunder. You can also use this obviously for Dungeons and Dragons for a module like Ghosts of Saltmarsh, which does use ships. And I think that would be a fun campaign to be able to use all of these sort of sea battle and naval battle, things like that. Also, I did get this neoprene mat from Table War. Again, use the links below if you are interested in picking up anything that you see today. Now, the sails are optional and I'm still debating whether or not to keep these sails on. These are just temporary. 
Um, I think it's a bit too white, so I need to go to the store and pick up some more beige colored uh, paper. But the reason why I'm debating, even though I do sort of like the look of it, is that they might get in the way of actually having the miniatures down here. As you can see here, I might just keep the sails up here on the top, but not put them along the bottom. So I'm going to experiment a little bit. I definitely want to put sort of ratty and torn up sails here for the black ship. Uh, I just haven't been able to go to the store and pick up some black cardstock in order to make that. But Again, I think leaving these lower deck areas accessible for your miniatures makes for better gameplay. So I'm still debating whether or not um, I am going to go uh, with all of the sales or just part, but we'll see. Go ahead and comment in the links below whether or not you think it looks good with the sales or without, if it's fine without the sales. Obviously, <laughs> uh, it's a little bit strange because the ships can't actually move without the sales, but Again, uh, I'm sort of trying to weigh whether or not it's worth it with uh, the aesthetic versus gameplay, which is something that we hobbyists are always trying to measure. And you know, I really thought that the rigging was going to be time consuming and challenging, but I ended up really liking it. And this reminds me of my younger days when I used to make those plastic model kits where I just enjoyed putting things together. And so <laughs> I can see myself if I really wanted to printing out a lot of the other ships that Printable Scenery has. And I just backed Ian Lovecraft's uh, latest Kickstarter, which has a bunch of ships as well as terrain for the shoreline, which is something that I also want to print out too. Dragon's Rest also has some docks and things that you can print out. So I'm going to be exploring after I go through my tournament what kind of terrain that I want to include on this seaboard. If you play any ship games or know of any rule sets other than Blood and Plunder, go ahead and make comments below. I'd be interested in exploring that as well. Also, if you're interested in having a tutorial video of how to play Blood and Plunder, especially the ship version, and after I figure out the rules, uh, I could make a video for that too. So please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Also use the link below if you're interested in getting 10% off to into the AM. Otherwise, happy printing, happy gaming. We'll see you next time. I needed a patch part of my ship and I'm using this grout. Uh, again, Greg Padilla helped me um, come up with this idea. But actually don't use this brand that I just showed you because I got the sandy kind and there's a smooth version of it. Couldn't find it at Lowe's, but I think Home Depot has it. But you know, even the sandy grout that I used was okay because very little of it was showing. But one of the prints that I made lifted off the bed and that's why the edge actually doesn't match up and that's why I need to use this to grout the edge. You could use green stuff, but when I have big gaps like this, I prefer to use a cheaper material and you can buy these small pints of grout for relatively cheap six bucks. Once it dries, like it shows here, um, you just use sandpaper to dry it off and it isn't too hard to shape it to where you want it to be. And I actually use a dental pick to put in some of the wood grains on the sides. Here are some references to how uh, to cut the dowels, both in centimeters and in inches. So just go ahead and follow that guide. It's pretty good. I have this hobby blade that I use to saw. You can also use a Dremel if you want to do that. And then use just use a piece of sandpaper to round off the edges and slowly build out all of the um, dowels so that it matches what is in the drawing. I do use CA glue or super glue just to keep all of the connecting pieces in place, but it's super easy with these cross pieces. And I do mark the middle of them so that I know where to place it onto the mast. And then I insert this top piece up top. Most of them you don't need to glue, but some of them are loose enough that a spot of super glue will hold everything in place like I did here. And this is what all of the masts look like built for both of the ships. And I think um, after priming them, again, I use the dark brown primer for the um, frigate. And then I'm using the milk chocolate as my first layer and using a stiff hog's hair brush, I just uh, do this initial layer, being careful not to get the paint down into the cracks and crevices because I want that to remain dark brown. So it's relatively quick and easy if you have a large brush like I have and just do the entire model 
this color except for any of the pieces that you want to remain this really dark brown which are all of the pieces um, that are connecting all of the masts except for this crow's nest I do paint this lighter color now I'm going to grab my honey brown and go over the deck again with this lighter brown just to give it a little bit lighter of a shade. I, you know, in retrospect, I wish I would have um, made the hull even lighter than what this came out to be. So uh, put a second coat on if you do want it to be lighter. But just go ahead and dry brush over the chocolate brown that you did initially if you want it to be a lighter brown and go ahead and do the deck as well. So any of the pieces that are wood are gonna lighten up if you use that honey brown. And again, it's all dependent on what kind of shade of brown that you want your deck to be. Here is Rookwood Red. And the reason why I'm not using pure red is I don't want it to be that super bright red color. So this is a little bit more toned down of a red, more of a natural looking red. And you're gonna do this stripe down here at the bottom. Of course, this is all optional. I'm just following the paint scheme that's found on printable scenery. Here, I'm gonna grab True Blue and do the upper part. And I'm careful, again, trying not to get a ton of paint. You don't want a solid coat of paint because you actually want the grains of the wood to show up because that's what's gonna happen with natural wood when you paint over it like this with weathering. Uh, some of the wood underneath is still going to show through and the grain is still going to show through. So I'm making sure that the paint doesn't go all the way into the cracks and crevices. And make sure you do the back part of the ship as well, just to keep consistent with this blue. Here I have Emperor's Gold, but you can pick any gold color that you want. I prefer sort of a deeper uh, gold color rather than a lighter one, and so I really like this color a lot. So I'm going to use this to do all of the railing and all of the uh, decorative pieces that are found on the ship just to give it a different color. And I don't mind if the dark brown is still showing through underneath. That just gives it a little bit more depth, as you can see here in the decorative work on the back of the ship. And then also on the prow, the decorative piece here looks really good with this gold. Final color I'm gonna use is just black and I'm gonna go over all of the metal. I noticed on Printable Scenery's um, page that they painted most of their metal to be a metallic silver. I prefer black because I feel like in ancient days, blacksmiths, uh, the steel that they created wasn't shiny unless they buffed it. Most of it was black, so that's the color that I prefer. And don't forget the railing that is on the outside of the ship as well. Paint that black. Now that that is all done, I do place all of my masts onto the boat. I actually didn't glue it down. You can glue it down if you want, but uh, for whatever reason, uh, I didn't feel like I needed it. And then I'm using this elastic cord, links in the descriptions below. I picked this up on Amazon and it's way better to use. And here um, I completely forgot this one dowel piece that goes on the back mast. I don't know why. And I forgot on both of them, I didn't make them. So at this point, I did go ahead and cut those pieces and painted them up. And then here I am showing some of the rigging. Uh, links in the descriptions below. Printable Scenery actually has a pretty good tutorial on how to rig up your mast. So uh, go ahead and use that link if you want more details. But it's pretty straightforward, not too complicated. And like I mentioned before, especially when you're using elastic material, it's way easier than string because to get something nice and taut on non-flexible string, is a lot harder to do than when you're using this elastic banding. Trim off the edges and that's pretty much done for all of the rigging. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the black shipping and I'm gonna start with zinc, which is a dark gray. And I am dry brushing all of the wooden areas, which actually isn't 
the majority of the ship because there's a lot of iron plating that or metal plating that is around the ship so make sure you're just getting the wood and as you can see here I'm being splotchy because it just makes it look aged when it isn't an even coat and that will just um, make the grain stand out. Here I have purple. You can pick any purple that you want. I have a way smaller brush because I want to control where it goes, basically only on the shingles. And I did have to go over it twice. And as you can see, I'm not putting a ton of it on. I'm not trying to cover the entire area because I want the black to show through underneath to provide some shading. And that is pretty much it for the purple. Here I'm grabbing my darkest silver that I have, which is this folk art metallic gunmetal gray or gunmetal silver. And I am dry brushing over, especially the front part of the ship, but anywhere that has metal plates, which is quite a bit actually. Now I'm not gonna do the rail, I'm doing the railing in copper. So just to do the metal sheets and then these metal bands, again, along uh, ribbing the side of the ship, I'm also doing in silver. And I'm being intentionally splotchy here as well. I don't want one nice even coat. I want it to look aged. So I'm not bothering coloring every single piece, but letting that black sh shadow uh, show up underneath. And also making sure I'm getting the metal pieces that is on the deck. And then here I do have folk art metallic copper, but you can pick any sort of contrasting color that you want. Um, but I think a metal color looks good and this copper I think is a deeper color than if I were to use gold. And that's why I'm using this color. And you can sort of pick out which pieces you want to be silver, which ones you want to be this warmer metallic color. Once you're done with all of that, then uh, go ahead and finish up with rigging on this ship. And again, went relatively smoothly without uh, any great difficulty in doing this as well. To paint up the cannons, just pick any brown that you want. I think this was espresso uh, brown craft paint that I was using for the cannons that go onto the frigate and just painting up the uh, bottom part that is wooden, keeping the barrel black, although you could paint that silver, I guess. And there you have it. This is what the finished pieces look like. Again, I'm super happy with how it turned out. I think the black ship looks intimidating and is all spiky and gothic uh, with the undead. I think it'll look even better once I put the sails on. Again, just going to use cardstock and rough it up and tatter the edges to make it look more like a ghost ship. And we'll attach that later. And the uh, ships do seem a little bit smaller than 28 millimeter because these 28 millimeter, well, these are granted more like 32 millimeter. Uh, miniatures they do look a little bit larger in scale than what is actually the ship but you know for games like blood and plunder things like that i don't think it matters that much between 28 millimeter true 28 or 32 uh, i don't think it matters too much and then here is the frigate which i think looks really cool as well you can definitely put more figures on the deck because it's wider i love the cannons uh, multiple cannons that are on the ship and overall super happy with both of these builds. I do print everything in 0.2 millimeter height on my Prusa slicer and all of these pieces turned out great. And except for that seam uh, that uh, lifted a little bit off the bed, uh, everything glued together relatively well without too much trouble. So super happy again, like and subscribe if you wanna see more of these hobby videos. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.